Hello everybody, um, I'm going to wait just a couple of seconds here if people want to join before we get started. And I hope everyone is having a great Tuesday. So for this month, um, in this purple chair chat, we're going to be talking about um, Suicide Awareness Month, which is in September. And I want to welcome you all to this purple chair chat. My name is Evelyn. My pronouns are she, hers. I'm an education and prevention specialist at Jana's Campaign. So since September is Suicide Awareness Month, and this is such an important topic to bring attention to, um, we thought that making it the subject of our purple chair chat this month seemed like a really great way to bring attention um, and kind of start this conversation. So our Purple Chair Chats are live conversations, instilling the knowledge, skills, and values necessary to prevent gender and relationship violence. And we use these discussions to try to raise awareness, engage bystanders, promote healthy and respectful relationships, as well as encourage the development of new social norms. Now today we are going to be actively discussing things like suicide, mental health, as well as how relationship violence can be a contributing factor towards those things. So I do want to make that disclaimer that this content might be triggering for some people and we want you to do whatever you need to take care of yourself and ground yourself. And if you are in need of resources or services but you might not know who to contact or who to reach out to, um, please talk to us, reach out to us, we will get you and contact with those right people and we will have specific mental health and suicide prevention resources in the comment section of this live as well so feel free to check those out now the majority of information that I'm using in today's purple chair chat is from the American Association for suicidology the World Health Organization the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention partnership against domestic violence and the CDC so today, we're going to start off with just a bit of depression and suicide statistics because I always think that knowing the statistics behind these super tough issues really helps to put the gravity of it all into perspective. But I also think that having a better idea of how many people suffer with things like depression or suicide ideation helps other individuals to not feel so alone in their feelings, their struggles, their dark times. So depression is the most prevalent mental health disorder. The lifetime risk for depression is 6 to 25 percent. And according to the National Institute of Mental Health, approximately 18.8 million Americans suffer from a depressive illness in any given year. And here are just a few of the most common symptoms of depression that can be an everyday occurrence. Things like having a depressed mood, so feeling sad or feeling empty, having a lack of interest in previously enjoyed activities, things that someone maybe used to love to do, significant weight loss or weight gain, or on that same line, a decrease or increase in appetite, um, insomnia or hypersomnia, so not being able to fall asleep versus uh, feeling the need to sleep all the time. Irritability, fatigue or loss of energy, feeling worthless, hopeless, guilty, the inability to concentrate on something, and then recurrent thoughts of death, recurrent suicidal ideation, or creating a plan for completing suicide. Now, treatment of depression is effective 60 to 80 percent of the time and those numbers are really high which is exciting and which is encouraging but according to the world health organization less than 25 percent of individuals with depression actually receive that adequate treatment suicide is the 12th leading cause of death in the united states in 2020 45,979 americans died by suicide and also in 2020 there were an estimated 1.2 million suicide attempts these numbers are tragic and they're overwhelming but what we know is that suicide can be prevented and we're going to talk more about how in this chat so shifting gears slightly to talk about the links between depression, suicide, and gender-based violence. We know that research has consistently shown that women who are sexually abused show a 12 to 20-fold increase 
in suicide attempts. And then child sexual abuse survivors show a 150% increased risk of later suicidal behavior. 23% of domestic violence survivors have attempted suicide, and that's in comparison to just 3% among those who have not experienced any kind of domestic violence. Reasons for this correlation of domestic violence and attempted suicide, they're complex. Sometimes they vary, but the link almost always includes the severe and sustained stress that goes hand in hand with experiencing abuse, right? Things like experiencing humiliation, being controlled, being put in isolation, having a lack of access to money or other basic resources, and actually coercive control as a form of abuse has been implicated as the highest predictor of suicidal behaviors and survivors. So coercive control, keep that in mind. All right, so let's talk about suicide prevention itself. Because a lot of times, it's not just one thing in someone's life that's driving them to consider suicide. It's a combination of multiple hardships and issues that are contributing factors, and they're all happening at the same time. It's things like overall life stresses, financial instability, loneliness, or social isolation, which we saw so much of in 2020 and with COVID-19, um, emotional pain, PTSD, being severely bullied, feeling like a burden to others. Again, people could be feeling many, many of these things all at once, and it just seems too overwhelming for them. Like there just isn't any hope. There's never going to be a way out that they can see. However, there are things that can be done, like I mentioned earlier, to prevent people from finding themselves in these situations and these, this, feeling, this feeling of hopelessness. So specific treatments used by mental health professionals cognitive behavior therapy, medications, we know they have been proven to help people manage their suicidal ideation and behavior. Another thing though is asking someone, right? Confronting someone about how they're doing openly because asking someone directly if they're thinking about suicide won't put the idea in their head, which is something that some people might be afraid of. The fact is that most people will actually be relieved that someone has started that conversation, that someone has reached out to them, that someone has allowed them to talk. Now, some things that can be done state and community-wide, prevention-wise, include um, strengthening economic support through things like backing household financial security, housing stabilization policies being put in place. Another thing is promoting connectedness in general um, with like peer norm programs in secondary education and higher education, community engagement events, having those friendships and fellowship, feeling connected, feeling supported by others in your life. It's so very essential. And then finally, teaching coping and problem solving skills, social emotional learning programs um, within schools and schools program. It can look something like that. Parenting skills and family relationship programs um, that can be available through like a community center or a parents night at schools. Those are just, those are just a couple of the different ways um, that those coping skills could be taught, could be brought in. And again, those are just a few of the ways um, that when implemented effectively, the high rates of suicide that we see can be lowered overall, can be prevented. And so now we've come to the question um, that I think I ask basically every single Purple Chair Chat of what can you do? Because we always want to bring it back to the individual level give you the resources to make change in your personal lives, your loved ones' lives, within your communities. So you can empower states and communities to prevent suicide by promoting resources like the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. 988 is replacing the hotline that used to exist that was like a full length, longer number that people would have to look up or it might be hard to remember. So now people can simply dial 988 the same way that they would dial 911 in an emergency and they will immediately be connected with the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline for help. And that change is definitely something that we should be getting the word out for all of those who don't know yet. So feel free to post those things on your social media as well. Start that conversation. 
And if you know someone who is directly at risk, you can help them by, number one, talking to them in private, really listening to their story, um, making sure they know how much you care about them, how much other people in their life care about them, asking directly if they're thinking about suicide. Again, kind of like I mentioned earlier, and this is really important, avoid debating the value of life. Avoid minimizing their problems. Avoid giving them advice, right? Don't say something like, well, yeah, seems like you're going through a rough patch, but you know, so-and-so, they're really going through it, right? Compare your situation to them. You should be glad that you're not where they're at, or just think of all the people in the world who fill in the blank, right? You're in a much better position than them. Really avoid saying things like that. Take the person seriously. If they say they're considering suicide, don't brush it off because you think they might be lying or they might just be saying it to get attention. You need to stay with them. Help them use the 988 Suicide Lifeline. Escort them to a mental health service or an emergency room. Basically, don't leave them until you are sure that they are no longer a danger to themselves or others. All right. And as we finish out today, I hope you go from this chat with compassion, with understanding, with empathy for those you know who are facing this extremely tough battle with depression or suicide ideation. And I also hope that you can use some of the things that we talked about today to help those in your life who might be struggling with these things. Thank you so much for joining me. I know this is an extremely tough subject, so thank you for sticking through it. As always, if you're in need of resources or services and you don't know who your local advocates are, please reach out to us and we will put you in contact with those right people. Thanks so much, everybody, and I'll see you next month.